Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 16 has been out for many months at this point and we've had various iterations with many new features. There's hundreds and hundreds of them, but I wanted to share some tips that you forgot that are still great. Now, if you're on the lock screen and maybe you have a wallpaper set, but you have that wallpaper set to shuffle based on a time of day or more, if you go to that wallpaper and you've already set it, press and hold, go to customize, customize the lock screen, and then tap the three dots in the bottom, right? You can now change that daily, hourly on lock or on tap. So every time I tap on it, it will change the wallpaper. So if you want to change it, all the time, you can do that. Also within wallpapers, we have the different focus modes at the bottom. If you don't want these to change across different devices, as I hear that is a complaint quite a bit, you can change that pretty easily. Go into your settings, then go to focus under focus, change the setting that says share across devices. If you only want it to be on this specific device, when it goes into do not disturb, but not your Apple watch, or maybe another phone or iPad, turn it off and it will just stay on this device. None of the others will be affected. One thing that's really great about photos on iPhone is that it can use your GPS information to locate it on a map. However, when you share this photo with someone, you may not want to share that information every time. If we go into the photo, tap share to bring up the share sheet. At the top, we have options. Under options, we can turn off to include location. If we turn this off, even sharing it out, it takes that information off of the photo so no one knows exactly where it was taken. You can also do the same with all of the other metadata included as well. So when sharing with AirDrop, include all photo data or don't include it. Just turn these switches off and it will remove that information so you're not giving away your location even online if you're sharing that somewhere else. If we go into a photo, this is a photo I took for my watchOS 9.5 RC is out video, tap on it, then go into edit. Under edit, we can make our adjustments. Let's first tap on auto, see what it does. Then we'll just maybe bring up the exposure a little bit, adjust the brilliance, just go through all of these and make it how you want. And then maybe the contrast a little more. And I think you get the idea there. Once we're done with our edit, tap done. And maybe we have another photo we want to carry the same edits over to. Tap the three dots in the upper right tap on copy edits then go to the next one, tap on the three dots again, tap paste edits, and it should instantly update to the same exact settings that you just had. So you can do this over and over. It's something I should utilize more, but it's there if you forgot it was there and hopefully it's helpful. If you're using messages and you recently deleted a message, there's actually a way to recover that. First, go into your settings, go down to messages, under messages, scroll to the bottom and at the bottom, you can see it says filter unknown senders. Make sure this is enabled. So we'll have the option then go into your messages and in the top left, it will say filters, tap on filters and you can see recently deleted. Now you can go into recently deleted and you'll be able to tap on a message and actually recover it down at the bottom, or you can fully delete it if you want to do that. Also within messages, if you want to send an audio message, you can tap to hold to record these typically expire, but if you want to stop them from expiring, you can change a setting to do that. Back in our messages, scroll to the bottom and you'll see audio messages. You can have them expire after two minutes, which is default or switch that to never, and they'll never go away. So that's a great option to have if you don't want it to be removed from the conversation history. If you use the timer feature a lot on the iPhone by going into the clock, there's a faster way. If you go into the control center, You'll have the little clock icon there. And yes, you can jump right to the timer section. However, there's an even faster way. If you haptic press or long press, you'll see, you can quickly set a timer for one minute all the way up until two hours. So that's a quick way to set that. And also if you use timers a lot, there's a nice feature that I forgot about that's been there for a while, but may be helpful. If you go into the timer, you can have it end and then stop playing music. Instead of setting off an alarm, you can have it end with stopping your music. So if you go into the when timer ends, go down to the bottom, tap on stop playing, whatever you've set your timer to will stop music in the background. So if we go in and maybe play a song here, go back, start our timer. If we go back to our music, it should stop in just a couple seconds. But if you never want the music to end, this is where today's sponsor comes in soundcore. 
the Soundcore X600 brings impressive sound on the go. I was actually surprised at the sound coming out of it. The X600 will play for up to 12 hours with its built-in battery and features spatial sound along with wireless high-res certification. The Soundcore X600 has a metal enclosure with five total drivers and three amplifiers, and is even IPX7 certified to withstand water and dust. The Soundcore X600 feels like it's very substantial and it's built really well. It also has this companion app that allows you to customize the equalizer or use some of their presets as well. I'll link it in the description below so you can check it out as well. Now, if you maybe have an app that you've just recently installed and it's prompting you to rate it and you don't want to do that over and over, you can actually disable this in the settings. If you go into your settings, go down to app store, under App Store, scroll down a little bit, and you'll see in-app ratings and reviews. It says, help developers and other users know what you think by letting apps ask for product feedback. If you disable this, the app can't ask you anymore and you won't be prompted for it. So it's really nice if that's bothering you over and over. Of course, if you want to help out the developer, make sure to leave it enabled. Within contacts, it's much easier to delete a contact or delete multiple contacts compared to what you could do before. If we go into the contact list and I'll go into my favorites, you can press and hold and just quickly delete a contact or remove it from the list. Or if you want to delete multiple contacts, use two fingers, swipe down, it selects all of them, press and hold, and then you can either merge all three, remove them from the list, or delete three contacts. So it's a much easier way to get rid of them if you really do want to remove a contact. Apple continues to update Spotlight Search more and more, and now it actually does conversions. And this is something I've been using more and more as you can search not only things on the phone, the internet, but also convert things. So maybe if we put in 21 C, it automatically knows that I'm looking for Fahrenheit converts it to 69.8 degrees Fahrenheit or tells me what it is. You can do the same thing with distance. So maybe 1100 kilometers equals 683.51 miles. So it helps with really easy conversions. And the same is true with math or anything else. Six plus four, We'll go to four, you'll see there it automatically says that it's 10. So you can use this as a calculator without going into the calculator. One feature I think a lot of people forgot about that's very helpful is maybe you're researching something in Safari and you need to make a note. Press and hold on just about anything. We'll select this text here, slide over and tap on new quick note. It opens up a quick note within notes. Then you can actually add text, add a photo or make notes about what you've just saved. So this is a note about iOS 16 and then we'll hit save and it goes into our quick notes. If we swipe home, we've got a little option here to open it up. It opens up in notes. You can also lock a note. I know a lot of people have wanted to do this in different apps and maybe you forgot. You can actually save a password to lock your note. So if we go into our main notes, you can't do it with quick notes and within a note, this is my iPhone 12 pro max unboxing. You can tap the three dots in the upper right. Of course you can pin the note, but you can also lock it with a password. So you can save a specific password for your notes and then lock them. Then you can have them saved. If someone's using your phone, go back, try to view that note then you'll have to unlock it using that password and only you'll be able to see it or whoever has that password. Now, when it comes to phone calls, there's a newer feature that you should definitely consider enabling that I almost forgot about. It's a very helpful feature that when you place a phone call, we'll just place a call to Apple, swipe down in the control center and then tap on mic mode, enable voice isolation, and it helps reduce the overall background noise that the caller hears. So this is something that if you're in a noisy environment, I would highly recommend enabling. You can always switch it back to standard if you want people to hear who's around you or the environment, but typically I, I just leave it on voice isolation and it seems to help. Also, there's another feature I would recommend enabling is if you press the lock button that can end the call. There's actually a way to disable this and many people are familiar with it, but many people also forgot. So if we go into our settings, go to accessibility, then we go to touch under touch, swipe down, and you have the option to prevent lock to end call. Enable this and you'll no longer be able to end a call just by locking your phone. I know many people have bumped that and turned off their display and also ended the call accidentally. Something that should be on by default, I believe, but if you don't have it on, I would highly recommend it. 
Now Siri has some nice features as well that you may not be aware of. The first one is nothing that you have to enable, but Siri can actually restart the phone. So let's go ahead and try that. Restart my phone. And we'll give it a moment. And it says just to confirm you want to restart this device. Yes, I want to restart the device. And then it will restart or we can tap restart. It just confirms with you. Now we'll give it a moment and then we'll turn it back on. And if we go to our settings, there's some settings I would recommend for Siri as well. So if we go to Siri and search under Siri and search, Siri can actually hang up a call now. So make sure you have this enabled. If you need ever to use Siri to hang up a call, this is great for accessibility as well. It's a much requested feature that I'm sure many people are using. Siri can also listen a little bit longer when you need it to. This is actually found under accessibility and then Siri. So if we go down to Siri, you can also have it listen a little bit longer. Maybe you speak a little slower or you just need a little bit more time to get your thoughts together. You can actually have the Siri pause time switch to longer or longest. I have it on longer just because I'm often making videos like this and I need it to pause a little bit, but if it's on default and that's too short, just switch it to longer or longest and that should help you out. Now, if you're on a lot of calls, maybe with FaceTime, you're sharing your screen a lot. There's a privacy setting I would recommend enabling if you haven't already. If we go into settings, go to notifications under notifications, you'll see here we have screen sharing notifications are currently on. So if we're sharing our screen, notifications will keep showing up on our screen. Maybe we don't want the person we're sharing our screen with to see that make sure this is disabled for many people. This is disabled by default, but it could be turned on. Make sure that's disabled to keep everything private. If you share your screen a lot. Now there's a feature under mail that many people may have forgotten about. If we go into mail within mail, if there's an email we want to deal with a little bit later, we can slide over, tap on more, and then go to remind me under remind me. We can have it remind us in an hour tonight, tomorrow, or just later at a custom time. We can set the date and time, and then it will remind us. It will remind us in the mail app and typically with a reminder itself. So this is a really helpful feature that many forgot was added with iOS 16. Another feature I would recommend enabling is maybe you're in Safari and you're often getting captures that pop up and make you verify that you're actually a person instead of maybe a robot trying to get in or a AI. This is actually built in to iCloud. If we go into settings, tap on our name at the top under password and security, you'll see we have an option for automatic verification. Make sure this is enabled. It says bypass captures and apps and on the web by allowing iCloud to automatically and privately verify your device and account. It's super helpful and helps avoid that on most iOS devices. Just make sure that's enabled. You still will occasionally get a capture that you have to verify, but it gets rid of a lot of them with iOS 16. We actually gained the ability to delete more stock apps. While I don't typically do this, you can now delete things such as the health app. If you want to get rid of it completely, you can remove it from your device, not just your home screen. The same is true with find my, which removes some security. So I wouldn't recommend that. And also the clock app lets you do that as well. So maybe you want to use custom apps for this. You can do that and delete them completely from your device. However, you will lose some features with things like find my. Additionally, there's one feature I would highly recommend enabling if you have an iPhone that actually has a macro camera. It's really nice to have a macro camera. And as we get close to something, you'll see that I actually have a little line through the macro icon. I can enable this automatically or by myself manually. I highly recommend you enable the feature to do it manually. If you go into settings, then go down to camera under camera, scroll to the bottom. You'll see there's an option for macro control. I typically always leave this enabled as I don't want it switching automatically while I'm in the middle of trying to film something or go into a photo. So turn that on. You'll have full manual control over it. Also, if it pops up on your screen while you're using the camera, you can disable it as well, but it's just really helpful to have that here. So if I do want to use macro, I can do that. If I don't, I can turn it off and I'll just have to back up a little bit. So that's over 20 different tips and features that you may have forgotten about with iOS 16. Hopefully some of them helped you out and you weren't aware of some of them, but let me know if you didn't know any of them in the comments below. I'd love to hear which ones were new to you. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.